Mike Trout is out again with a torn meniscus. I, again, it is. it hurts. It hurts to see Mike Trout, these injuries, these happen, how great of a ball player he was. But he tore his meniscus again. And James, what is your initial feelings and thoughts of hearing uh, Mike Trout getting hurt again? My initial feeling, my initial thought was, okay, it oh. happened again. Why are we shocked by this? He hasn't been healthy in over five years. He hasn't played more than 150 games in five years. And I know every year we're saying that this is the year that Mike Trout is going to get healthy and he's going to be the Mike Trout of old. I don't think we're ever going to see that again. I do you? I don't feel like it. It hurts. It, it, it sucks. It's, and yes, that's the problem, though, too. It's become so normal now that he's getting hurt so often that it just feels like it's just like every year you're just waiting for something. You're holding your breath. To, let's let's back it up here. 2017, he, he tore a ligament in his thumb. That was like the first injury. He was sliding into second base, tore the ligament in his thumb. Uh, 2021, he had a calf strain, which is... Sounds simple, but man, that'll stop you. Stop you really quick, especially as a hitter and outfielder and stuff like that. Then he had back inflammation, and I actually thought that was going to be a, a major problem, like a big, big problem with the back. You know, usually hitters, you get that back stuff, and that, that ends up like just totally stopping you. Uh, 23, he has a hamate, bro breaks his hamate bone. 24, meniscus, and then, uh, then he tears the meniscus again while he was on a rehab assignment in, I believe he was in Salt Lake City, the AAA affiliate of the Los Angeles, or the Los Angeles Angels of the Anaheim of California. I don't know what it is. It's <laughs> his going out and setting records, MVPs. Like, he's got, how many MVPs he have? What does he have? Three? Four? I don't even know. But he's got, like, He's got like Something three or like four that. number twos. He's got like a couple, like he's got number four, number fives. It's absolutely ridiculous when you look at his baseball reference page, like how many of those MVP stuff you look at. And you can see the bold as the MVP, but you got to look at like the number two, number three, number four. How many times he's been like top five MVP is, I don't know if I've ever seen a player on that type of list, you know, beside Barry, who obviously has seven. And let's not forget that he would have won more if it wasn't for Otani coming in because he was number two a couple times to Otani. Yes, Otani, and I he? think of Miguel Cabrera. And here's the thing, too, is I was, I was taking some time um, last week when he had gotten hurt or whenever it was when he got hurt, whatever whatever day it was. And I was looking at baseball reference page and, I, and I'm sitting there and I'm looking at who he lost to. And there were times when you're like, dude, like, yeah, oh man, that's. Yeah, like that guy had a great year, but some numbers, you know, Trout's better in in some of these categories. Trout's leading the league in a lot of these categories, and Trout's losing two guys. I think he lost Miguel Cabrera, and you look back and you're like, outside of batting average, like Trout was, had a better season, you know, stuff like that. And so it's really interesting. He could have definitely had some more, and again, because Otani comes in and, and takes the world by storm, uh, he loses out to Otani. Uh, it became so normal. The trout season so good became so normal, normalized. And now the injury uh, has become no, so normalized to him. My question to you, though, is there a way to get him healthier? Is it a DH situation? If he doesn't play outfield again, do, does, does, is there anything Major League Baseball is missing? If he moves to DH and, and, and has a second part of his career, do you think that could help him? I think it is the absolute right move to make him into a DH. If he's not running in the outfield, sliding for balls, diving for balls, trying to climb the wall for balls, he will be much better off. Let him sit there, let him take his hacks, let him hit the ball, and if he has to jog to the bases, that's fine. He doesn't need to slide. I'll, I'll be just fine if he gets called out at second because he didn't slide. As long as that guy is in the lineup, he's hitting the ball and hitting the ball hard. That's all that matters. That's the only way we can possibly see Trout be healthy for the rest of his career. Absolutely. I I completely agree with you. I 100% I agree with you. I think DH, first base, whatever that is, find a spot to him where he's not running around like a madman doing his, his normal stuff. You have to take pressure off it and it's going to suck because there's a new generation of kids watching that will never understand how good he was at everything every single thing that he did he was great at and so they're going to be missing it but at the end of the day the game is better because mike trout is on the field and playing james is mike trout a hall of famer that is a tough one because 
he's been in the league and he's definitely been the best player of his generation, uh, talent wise. But you look at it, he hasn't hit those milestone stats that you would expect the best player of a generation to hit. I don't think he has 400 home runs yet. He doesn't have 3,000 hits. Yes, his average is north of 300. Might add 299. I guess the only way you can... 299. Really? Yes, but in a generation that 300 isn't, you know, the, 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 the same as it used to be. Right. The only way that I say yes, he's a Hall of Famer is because while he was there, he was by far the best player in baseball. He was that MVP multiple times. You can say there was no doubt that he was the best player in baseball. So if I was going to vote, yes, I would put him in. But it's very interesting because he could get into that Don Mattingly territory where he just didn't re reach the milestones. Who has a better war, Ken Griffey Jr. or Mike Trout? I think the answer is Mike Trout. And it is Mike Trout. It is by three games. Well, a little less than three games. Uh, better war than Nolan Ryan, Rod Crew, Tom Glavin, Jeff Bagwell, Chipper Jones. Better war. He is number 51 all time, and he has played in far less games than a lot of those players ahead of him. Like an Al Kaline is, is, is not many games wore above him and that's a season above him and he how k-line has played nine more seasons than him adrian beltre is in reachable one good season reachable distance and adrian beltre has played uh eight seasons more than him um that would drop him into the 30s in war of all time in the 30s and all he has to do is play one more season but let me ask you this, though. Most players, don't they end up getting negative war later in their career as their skills go down? Some, yes. Because right now, whenever Mike Trout plays, he's amongst the best in baseball, even now with all the injuries. He hasn't hit that wall where when he plays, he's hitting 200, striking out a whole bunch. He's still a far superior player to everybody else when he's on the field. My question is later on, as he's getting older, is he going to start getting that negative war to drop him down while he's trying to get some of those milestones? With how little he played this year, he still had a one war. He still was better than the league, and, and he played a tiny little bit. Uh, yes, most players do end up with some negative wars, or at least going down from their average, and that's going to be a, an interesting one for him to see how that affects him if he go, moves to a first base or moves to a DH type of situation. But the he had a couple. I mean, again, when he got hurt, like 2020, he only had 53 games. Again, that was a short season, 1.8 war. When he was hurt in 21, he still had a 1.8 war, and he only played 36 games right at 6.2 and 22 but he had years where he had over 10 10 and a half and you start looking at his baseball reference page you start looking at the numbers when he led the league it's unreal it's on it there's nothing to me i've never seen a hall of famer be such a hall of famer than him and in such a short period of time i mean again we talked about the the mvp we talked about this but let's literally let's let's hear the numbers at his rookie year rookie the, he won rookie of the year and with a silver slugger, an all-star, MVP two, okay? Next year, MVP two. So that's two of them. MVP one, MVP two, MVP one, MVP four, MVP two, MVP one, MVP five, and then an MVP eight. He had four number twos and four number and three number ones. That's Barry Bonds. That's Barry Bonds. You know, Agreed. that's to me. Agreed. He and, and, that he never he doesn't have any of the numbers he's short of 400 he's just short of 300 uh batting average doesn't have a crazy number of rbis it's just when you look across the league you just know who's all of him and this dude there's never been a, somebody that i saw play the game quite like that griffey's the only one i've ever seen that that be like that and again griffey's career got cut short because of injuries welcome mike trout